Hi, I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. Today, we're in North Carolina, and I can't wait to show you Winston-Salem. My name is Eric Hastings. Yeah, that's me. And for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to travel, and I still do today. But you know what I've learned? There's so much more that brings us together than divides us, which is why I've made it my mission to do the very same things you can do, but to take you beyond the experiences, to uncover the soul of every place we visit. Let me introduce you to the people, the places, and the secrets that remind us how exciting it is to share with one another, to understand one another, and to realize just how connected we really are. I am Eric the Travel Guy, and this is Beyond Your Backyard. Thank you for watching and welcome back. You know, one of the themes I love to explore is old versus new, or as I noted earlier, historic versus modern. Well, today we're in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, a perfect city to have such a discussion because this town is definitely filled with innovative ideas, really remarkable, cool, and eclectic spaces and neighborhoods, and an unmistakable entrepreneurial spirit. And who knew that a hyphen in its name would pose so many questions? Well, we seek to answer those questions today, and we'll do so by learning more about Moravian history. I'll bet you didn't see that coming. We'll also learn why this town is an arts and performing arts enclave. And we will get creative with not just those delicious cookies, but none other than a sweet potato. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. Let's get started. Located in the northwest part of North Carolina, Winston-Salem is easily accessible. It's about two hours east of Asheville, five hours north of Atlanta, five and a half hours south of Washington, D.C., and less than two hours west of Raleigh. And there's an international airport just about 25 minutes from downtown. But to get started today, I thought it best to learn about the rich history of Winston-Salem and to understand why this pioneering city and its legacy have endured so well. And to do that, I caught up with my new friend, the director of Moravian Research at Old Salem Museum and Gardens, Martha Hartley. What years are we working with here? It's in the early 1720s that we have the revival or the renewal of the Moravian Church, and really the modern Moravian Church in Saxony and part of Germany. Got it. And they began their work in the world as missionaries, but they always wanted a large body of land they could control. And that's what brought them to Piedmont, North Carolina in 1752. 52, okay. Yes. When they came upon this land, uh -huh. were they looking for something from the land specifically? Yes, they were looking for a place where they could live and thrive and where they could have a robust economy and live their lives as very religious people. And they had been offered 100,000 acres, and that was the establishment of Wachovia, or what was originally called Wachau, which is a place in Austria that they knew. And this rolling landscape reminded, reminded them of Austria. Them. So they called it Wachovia. They had a plan for it. The Moravians were excellent designers and planners. And Salem was established as a central town, 1766. Was life hard back then? Well, they had a water system. Mm -hmm. Whether you're pumping to uh, cook or to clean, you've got that accessibility. They were very organized, they were very sophisticated. And so the placement of this square is so that they could bring in gravity-fed water from a mile away. They piped water from springs about a mile and buried the logs, and there were different places in town where there were standpipes, and there was water in this building in 1788. It was phenomenal. That's crazy. And so when George Washington visited in yes. 1791, he was very impressed with the water system because it was only the second successful municipal water system in the country. And the other one was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where the Moravians were also Moravians. located. So you have this uh, very design-oriented, technologically savvy group of people uh, who were also very artistic, very musical, very religious. Religion permeated every part of every day. Sure. Everything you did was for the Lord. Now we fast forward another 80 years, call it, and now we have Winston. Yes, that's right, Winston. Because, because a lot of people don't, they, they wonder, why is it called Winston-Salem? Why don't that's you just right. call it something, but yet there's a hyphen there for a reason, and a lot of people assume Winston comes first because it's first, it's first in the title, well, right. But that's a great question, and in 1849, it was decided that there needed to be another courthouse and closer to the population. So that county was split in half, 
And the Southern County was named for Scythe, after Benjamin for Scythe, mm -hmm. a, a, a war hero from around here. And Wachovia was in this new county for Scythe. And Salem, in the center of this place, is the logical place to have this new county seat because people have to do their business. Yep. But this is still a religious place. Uh, the leadership did not want to have court proceedings or executions here. Yeah. So they sold 51 acres in the northern part of the Salem town lot for the new county seat, which was named Winston two years later. And so Winston and Salem grew side by side uh, until the consolidation in 1913. There was a lot shared. Uh, this, of course, was religious. It was a theocracy until 1856. But Salem had already developed industrially. There was a paper mill hill in, here in the 1780s. There's a cotton mill in the 1830s, a woolen mill in the 1840s. So there's a lot of industry going on. There's also banking here in 1815. Uh, an agency of the Cape Fear Bank was here, and that would grow into Wachovia Bank. The train came in 1873. The very next year, R.J. Reynolds came. Because there was a train, there was uh, money, there was entrepreneurship, there was already established industry. So Winston began to really grow in that direction with uh, tobacco and tex textiles. So mm -hmm. that really fueled the economy here and made Winston-Salem the largest and wealthiest city in North Carolina until the Great Depression. Why is it that the Moravians, why are they important to the story of this state and this country? Well, they're very important to where we are today because they are the origin of Winston-Salem, this, this thriving place of arts and innovation, which is the moniker for the city. And right. it all goes back to the Moravians and what they established here in the 18th century. The arts, the science, the music, the things we've talked about, some of the earliest chamber music in America was composed here in the 1780s by the Moravians. They brought the, tom the trombone to America. You begin to think about... Uh, this water system, this this very sophisticated town plan, this design, the architecture, uh, it all just is not typical at all of, no. of colonial America. But people can come and visit it. They can. The Moravian Archives has a beautiful facility here, the Archie K. Davis Center, which also houses the Moravian Music Foundation. And they have hours for the public to come in, and people can do family research or general research, and it's very special. and. A wonderful experience. Well, Arthur, thank, thank you, you for this. It's I really been a appreciate it. Pleasure. This. Thank you for all your good questions and your well, knowledge and I preparation. Did. Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> this day is working out. After learning all about the Moravians' engineering feats, disciplined work ethic, and innovative spirits, it's easy to see that very essence everywhere and how it permeates all of the businesses, the arts, and even the culinary scene in Winston-Salem. That hardworking and enduring spirit is deliciously alive and well at my next stop, Mrs. Haynes' Moravian Cookies. Hey, Good Travis. Good morning. Good morning. How Welcome are you, to Miss Haynes' Cookie Factory. Thank you very I'm Travis. much. I'm Travis. I'm Miss Haynes' oldest employee. 67 years. 67? I've, I've been working for her. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This place is amazing. Well, enjoy the aroma. Enjoy the, <laughs> the cook, taste of the cookies. That's the first thing I noticed. Well, everybody comes in. We'd love to show you around here and show you what we're Do doing. Do you mind? Be glad to. Oh, do my it. gosh. This is going to be amazing. Come on, guys. Where are we going first? Just follow me, Eric. All right. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to show you this wood cook stove. This Look is, at this beautiful stove. This is an old Adam Coast uh, car stove. My wife learned to make the cookies, helping her mother. And her first job was watching the oven. There was no temperature control on there. Right. She had to go by the aroma and just sense And the, the feel. She, she knew the timing. That's exactly right. But it, these are some of the things you had in the... This is a cook stove. Can I touch it? You may touch that. Because I remember we had one of these in our in our house. Brings it, back memories. It does bring back memories because I remember as a kid, I was always fascinated by how you pick one of these up. That's right. And I remember dropping one of these on my brother's foot. He it, was not happy about it. It made, a, made two noises. It <laughs> when it hit his foot and he hollered. And he hollered. <laughs> That's right. Now, actually, this is Eva's mother's rolling table. This was her actual table? This was her actual table. Oh, she probably put it on blocks to raise it to get her right height. Yeah. These cookie sheets were made at a blacksmith shop. These were what were used in the old wood cook stoves. Can we got a hold of I mean, they're not light. Man, it, but sturdy. Uh, th those things are probably 100 years old. We have this set up as Cookie. a... All cookies. <laughs> left their imp yeah. After a while, you leave, you leave yeah. their impression. You just leave them, yeah. All of these tins you see in here are uh, storage with cookies in them. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up. So you're telling me every one of these silver tins is 
full of cookies? You're probably looking at 3,000 cans in there. In the back, there's 3,000 more because we've been baking since January to get ready for this time of year. You'll see here, these are some of the ingredients. We get a ton or two of sugar, a ton or two of flour. We get about 60 or 70 barrels, 60 pound barrels of molasses a year. That's what goes in the ginger cookies. <laughs> so it appears to me, Travis, as much as I've enjoyed our time together, you're like the opening act. It's the, here's the main event. <laughs> this is the event. Mm -hmm. uh, well, good to meet you. Thank nice you so you. much. Oh, you're so welcome. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to go in there? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, we get to go in. You guys want to go in? Let's go in. Come on, let's go <laughs> Come in. Come on. Is this the heart of the operation? This is the heart of the operation. This is where the rolling, the cutting, the packing. Do you think, can I roll some of them? Yes. Do you mind? I have to get you an apron. Travis, go get him an apron. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we... Okay. we got to wash our hands. Wash our hands. Okay, very good. Right I can, here. I can do this. All right, we're going to start the we're gonna start the clock. Okay. We're going to see how many of these I can successfully do in one minute. Now, if I mess it up, they doesn't count. i got to get them on the pan in one minute. Ready? Ready? Here we go. 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 How the sausage gets made. <laughs> All right, now how many did we do? Nine. Nine? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this is not gonna work out. All right, so. You don't need a job, do I you? was gonna say, I think maybe I'll stick to, to the TV thing. I think so, too. And you guys stick to the cooking. I will. Talk about a broken heart right here. I mean, this. <laughs> I used to could do 100 pounds a day. How could you possibly do 100 pounds of cookies a day? How many sheets is that? Well, it's a whole lot. It's a lot, yeah. Thank you for this. It was you good know. to meet you, my, my gosh. Time. Oh, my gosh. This is how, this is how, this is how we do it. Yeah. Have a thank you yeah. very much for this. You're welcome. While the pioneering and artistic endeavors and achievements of Moravian culture are still evident today in historic areas throughout the city, there's also innovation, new architecture, and modern art that strike the perfect balance of mixing the old with the new. Winston-Salem is known as the city of arts and innovation after all. And no visit to Winston-Salem would be complete without a must-see visit to the centerpiece of the Rinalda Historic District the Rinalda House Museum of American Art. This restored 1917 mansion and grounds of R.J. and Catherine Reynolds capture the essence of creativity and forward thinking that abound in Winston-Salem to this day. We need to do a little history, if you don't mind, because it's one of my favorite subjects to begin with, but what time frame were we talking about? Who built this and why? Why is it here? What time? Help me out here. Let's start with the who, what, when, where. So the when is 1906 to 1924. So beginning of the 20th century, R.J. Reynolds is the state's wealthiest individual. Right. Uh, he waits till 54 to marry because he's really sing singularly focused on Got it. the industry. Uh, Mary's a much younger woman who's only 24. And her interests are agriculture, gardening, design, architecture. So his wife, Catherine Smith Reynolds, devises this scheme of creating a large estate uh, that's a place for recreation, for the family to, to live. They have young children at this point. Mm -hmm. But she also wants to create a progressive farm. So she wants to help the South to, to rise in sort of scientific agriculture. So mm -hmm. she builds a huge farm. That's really the first idea for Rinalda. And the idea spreads to eventually include golf and polo and gardens. And it's 30,000 square feet. The architectural style is bungalow. You, you, you're always just a step from being outside. It's healthy living. It's, it's a kind of breezy way of, of creating a home, but it's yeah. on a big scale. Got it. And the grounds themselves, what kind of acreage are we talking about here? Over a thousand acres at that point. And now that includes the, the Museum of Art. It includes gardens. It includes the village, which was the farm operations, which is now restaurants, shops, um, and actually Wake Forest University. So a really eminent Southern research institution, right. Liberal Arts College, is also on the original estate. So construction was finished in what year? 1917. Got it. And then who lived here and for how long? RJ and Catherine and their four children uh, moved into the house just in time for Christmas, 1917. So what's more remarkable, the structure itself or the art within it? Well, I'm biased you know, toward the art because uh, the later generations of this family in the 60s pretty at, at the avant-garde for actually focusing on American art, mm -hmm. which is not uh, um, as highly esteemed as it is today. So they were able to get really epitome works 
from many of the important artists in, American, in the American story. So it's, it's a concentration of the whole American art history mm -hmm. into this collection that you get to enjoy inside a comfortable house. And is this, forgive my ignorance, would this still be considered a private collection, or how does that work exactly? Uh, it's a nonprofit museum that's open to the public. Got it. Uh, yeah, almost every day of the year. And does the art rotate? What are we, what are we going to find when we're here on the walls? The art ro rotates frequently because works of art, as with the Grant Wood that's, that's over one shoulder, and the mm -hmm. Frederick Church over another, mm -hmm. um, get requested by other museums. So they, they, they travel to other museums. They also travel to our exhibition wing. So it's, it's really, it's not a huge collection. It's, it's, a, it's a fine concentration. So when people come, what are they going to experience when they're here? What would you tell them, certainly for a first timer? Well, the first experience is going down three quarters of a mile on the front lawn. Mm -hmm. So you get a sense that you're really going back in the country. Yeah. And Winston-Salem has grown around Rinalda, mm -hmm. but you still have that feeling of being, you know, in bu bucolic and the idyllic space. And then you come through and see the, the permanent collection that rotates through the house. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll recognize works of art from, you know, colonial era to the present. And then you'll see changing exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Then your creature comforts get taken care of in the village for lunch. Got it. Stroll through the gardens. And if you want to stay overnight, um, J uh, Bowman Gray, who was president of the company in the 20s, built a Norman-style Norman castle on the estate as well, which is now a hotel. I, I'm starting to understand why you've been here for 22 years. Are you going to stay for another 22? If they'll keep me. I, I think so. Thank you, my friend. Thank Good you. to meet you. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. As you can see by now, the rich appreciation for history and the arts in this town run deep. The consistent innovation and moving with the times are keys to Winston-Salem's charm and allure. And it's that same passion that overflows into its thriving culinary scene. All in one visit, you can experience everything from classic Southern favorites to modern diverse fare. Breweries, cafes, and bistros abound, all offering exciting and delicious menus to the hungry and thirsty traveler. I decided to stop in at Sweet Potatoes and catch up with Chef Stephanie to sample some of the scrumptious cuisine that can best be described as unique, southern-inspired, uptown, down-home cooking. Stephanie, so good to meet you. Chef Owen. Very nice to meet you, too. My gosh. It really is. And I know we're shooting this before you guys open because it would be next to impossible to do this when you're open, because it's going to be full. We hope so. We, we, <laughs> we uh, have been very fortunate over the past 17 years to be fairly busy. Well, so, when did yeah. you start? When you're 10? Come on now, yes, stop yes, it. Yes, that was <laughs> it. <laughs> Inherited it from my parents. Very good. <laughs> it seems to me there is real entrepreneurial innovation going on here. There really is. And I think that's something that most people watching would have no idea. I mean, you look at a map, you say, there's Winston-Salem. It doesn't stick out as, wow, there's a lot of really talented artists doing different things, including food, in this town, wouldn't you say? They're I mean, it is amazing. I'm so proud of this this city. We have all this talent, and so getting restaurants and, and, and other businesses is, is becoming a lot easier. And in this area by itself, there's all these women restaurant owners. The restaurant business is a very difficult business to be in. You A, you have to love it or there's absolutely no reason to do it because the, 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 the profit margins you're, you're, are you're so You're not thin. doing this to get rich, no. not by a long shot. Yeah. Um, and we do like food, and we've been doing this for a long time, the taking a chance for yourself. Yeah. And a lot of people down here did that and are doing that. And so you get the best flavor of a city when there's all these little small enterprises. Yeah. You know, and that, and that's what makes, I think, what's to say them a little bit different. All right, what are we looking at here first? This is fried green tomatoes and, and fried okra. If it ain't moving, we gonna fry it. <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> Allow me, please. Where's your plate? Oh, thank you. Well, those, yeah. Green tomato. These look amazing. Green tomatoes are, are my absolute favorite form of eating a vegetable. Talk, <laughs> talk about a versatile thing. It, it really is. Some people actually don't know it's like just a tomato before it ripens. Right. So they're actually pretty versatile. I love them. And I love the, I want to try this sweet potato. Would you The say? aioli? Sweet potato aioli. My superfood aioli. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm. That's delicious. It really is. What's in it? Can you tell us what's in it? Mm -hmm. Well, baked sweet potatoes, mashed, mm -hmm. mayonnaise, garlic, secret spices. Mm -hmm. We also do a BLT with that. Oh, uh, no. Fried green tomato. BLT. BLT with the with the aioli, yes. Yeah. the spread on. Uh -huh. Oh my word! What's what's the most fun you have? But the best thing is to see somebody enjoy what you did. Yeah. That, I mean, it's the best thing. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I could 
work in an office or something. Right. And make more money. I, I was going to say, and make more money. Yeah. That's very true. Uh -huh. All right. So, Chef, what do we have here? This looks... First of all, I tried to eat the whole basket, <laughs> but I, I knew there was more coming. So what have we moved on to? Okay, so this, these are, on the menu, I think it says slap your mama ribs. Well, yeah. These are barbecue ribs. Um, we got bourbon baked beans and coleslaw. The ribs are good. <laughs> Perfect. They're, they're good. One syllable good. That's all it needs. All right, what are you having? Over and here? this is a mambo chicken. This is a chicken sandwich. Okay. Um, it's mambo chicken. It's kind okay. of a spicy tomato based sauce. Okay. And it's fried chicken, boneless, uh, skin on fried chicken breast with coleslaw and sweet potato fries on a sweet potato bun. Now, should I eat these with a fork? Should I, what, you, what would you recommend? Put your little fork and knife down and. Okay. Take your fingers and go for it. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm going this side first. Uh -huh. Look at this. It is just. It just comes apart like it's supposed to. How, how do you make these? Slow roast, and then we finish them on the grill. Finish them on the grill? Uh-huh. And the barbecue sauce we make here, and it's a good barbecue sauce. That's a great barbecue um, sauce. But I want to try these beans. Oh, yeah, the beans are good. Mm -hmm. The beans with the coleslaw? Mm-hmm. That's my favorite, mm -hmm. beans and coleslaw. I love coleslaw. It's good by itself, if it's done right. But you got to get the sugar. you got to get the... That balance. The balance has yeah. to be there. There's green peppers in here. Yeah. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. That's, that's, that's what we're here for. Yeah. It is so easy to understand why people come back over and over and over and over again. Look at this. Did you, get, did you get a close up of that sandwich? Look at that sandwich. Sweet potato bun. Oh, butter on the bun. Oh, my goodness. Well, Pickled okra. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Chef, come on now. Isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm going, Doug. Oh, okay. Doug, Doug. Now have, have the other half. We'll do it together. OK. Come on. Okay. You don't got to stand here. Nobody wants to watch a fat guy eat by himself. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Sorry. OK. Ho oh, oh, my word. OK, yeah. All right, we're doing our dunk. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to dunk. Go ahead. You dunk first. Dunk. All right, I'll dunk. dunk. OK. A real dunk. <laughs> Get in there. Y'all enjoy. Thank you, Vivian. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, you let that sauce just roll to the back of your tongue? Yeah. And come it's, back it's forward? Yeah. Mm. And a sweet potato roll. They're so good. Now what happened? I, I looked I looked away. Nice Fried bite. chicken tenders, whole wheat spaghetti, a creamy Creole sauce. Oh, no. Uh, sausage and country ham. And a sweet potato biscuit um, as, comes with it. As you do. Uh -huh. But it appears to me here, there is a real celebration of entrepreneurs and independent owners. Why is that in this town? Uh, because people are willing to take a chance and celebrate um, the flavor, specifically of Winston-Salem, of the fact that this city is different from Charlotte or Greensboro or Durham. Yeah. This is our flavor. Krispy Kreme donuts, Moravian cookies, mm -hmm. sweet potatoes. This is this is our, our, our town, and this is what makes us different than any other city. You're, you're just who you are. Right and you're gearing it to people that actually live in the town. Thank you for this. Thank you. Of course, there's thousands of places all over this country you've yet to explore, but I'll tell you what, why don't you add Winston-Salem to the top of your list? I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. Thank you for exploring Beyond Your Backyard. In 1766, this was a wilderness, so having, um... <laughs> All right. You know, if you'd like to read a poem or something, perhaps we'll get you a book to read out loud. I'll just sit here and wrap this up, because <laughs> this is amazing. Call my cardiologist and, yeah. ooh, maybe if I spill something, I don't have to work the rest of the day. <laughs> Sorry, my shirt's dirty. <laughs> See, I gotta wait for action. See, I don't do anything without action. Now, here we go. You're the man that pulls the string and makes the monkey jump. I'm the monkey. <laughs> Travis, this is like a cookie aquarium. Gosh. Daddy, show him how to cut one or two, and then he can cut. And then we can cut a rug later on. OK. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Since you're learning, it's best just to do one at a time. You push and pull. Uh, uh, just go one way. Just go one way. Don't push down. Pull and push. Pull and push. Start in the middle. The middle. And don't mash down. Just no, a little bit harder than that. When are you sit? <laughs> you sitting on the push down. And faster. <laughs> Have it, uh, let it lay on your fingers. Let it land on your fingers. Just a flick of the wrist. That's I fine. thought you were doing better, but, <laughs> but I'm pro. glad you got another job. 
Yeah. Incidentally, mm -hmm. these are the same gloves I wear when I do my TV show. Well, now I watch you on TV. No, you do not. Stop yes, that. I do. Yeah. I watch Eric the Travel Guy. <laughs> Is that you? That's me.